use Omega Wave or HRV before? Raise your hand. So not many people. Okay, so what I will do is I will talk about the science behind it, but I'm also going to talk about how you could use it in your practice, in your clinic, in your gym, in your strength and conditioning world. Every time I talk to trainers, coaches, nutritionists, doctors, and I ask you guys, what do you do for a living? Are you still at this? <laughs> what happens is I ask you guys, you know nutrition, macros, nutrients, dehydrate, you know it all. And I ask you what you do to recover yourself, nothing. Massage is good, saunas are good. When's the last time you did a sauna? Oh, massage is great. When's the last time you had a massage? Oh, well, um, well, uh, yeah, well. Sleep is really good. The first thing that happens you get stressed, they stay up later, they don't get enough sleep. They get up earlier, they miss a meal, they miss their training. People will constantly empty the bank account of energy and not have enough restorative actions. So by having stuff like the Omega Wave and having stuff like uh, the HRV can give you an insight into it. However, if I ask you, are you tired? People say, oh, I'm wrecked. Sometimes the HRV doesn't give you enough information. It just says, you're good to go, or you're not good to go. And sometimes, mentally, you might feel like you're ready to go, but physically it says you're not. When it comes to HRV, what we're ultimately testing is the balance of our autonomic nervous system, a parasympathetic, Empathetic. I'm not going to go through too much of the science, guys. I want to give you some takeaway points. So HRV, fundamentally, is when the body stimulates your heart rate and then when your body says it to calm down again. So it's up and down. And the more balance you have between these two parts of your nervous system, the more heart rate variability you have. The more monotone your heart rate is, the more you're in a sympathetic dominance. So you're always in fight and flight mode. So, let's get into Omega Wave. So, Omega Wave is pretty much based off the HRV model, but it also does the DC and ECG analysis at the same time. And what it's going to tell us is, if you can imagine a radio station, I was trying to explain to the guys the last day, and you have different radio stations, different frequencies. When you tune into different frequencies, you can see how well your power frequency has recovered, how much your endurance has recovered, how much your nervous system or strength has recovered, and how much your coordination and agility has recovered. So when you do a program, guys, no matter what program it is, let's say it's a 5x5 five five program, which is like a, a heavy lift and relative strength program, whatever um, language you like to use, but heavy lifting tends to stress the central nervous system more than higher reps do. So it wouldn't really be an endurance training parameter. So the body will respond differently to that. So we will tell you on this scale that your central nervous system hasn't recovered fully, but your endurance system is great. Your agility is great. I'm going to show you here, we have an MMA guy we just did uh, this week. I'll show you his numbers. So it's basically HRV and assessing the, fre the, the frequency of your body to tell what systems are better recovered. So let me just give you a quick, Robbie, let me just give you a quick look on what it actually looks like. And it's not going to take too long, guys. We're not going to run a test. It's very short. No, I'll keep it on there. Just pin it there. So, a basic heart rate monitor across your chest, like most of them. The difference on this one is you also put electrodes on. Sorry, Robbie. Right hand. Here. You attach the electrodes on, you lie down, you don't talk for two and a half minutes while it runs its assessment. Great question. It depends on what, what you're running it. If you're going to run it like you would um, for, to assess the training recovery, it's obviously going to be after the training. It can be directly after or it can be six, seven hours after. And someone lies down. And it's too sweaty, his head is. Right. The so point being, he lies down two and a half minutes, it hooks up the Bluetooth to the phone, and it will assess. It will assess his heart rate, his heart rate variability, and then his DC and ECG current. And from that, it'll give us a report. Take a seat, Robbie, thanks. So, what it will give us, it will give us this four chart. So, what we have over here is we have our endurance, we have our speed and power, we have our strength, and we have our coordination and skill. So by looking at this chart, we can see which system, which biosystem in his body is well recovered. Again, it follows the same system. We have no and we have go. 
We have green is good to go, yellow is somewhat compromised, red is your flat line. So when somebody comes in to you like this, you can modulate your repetitions, your volume, your density, your, the whole program based on how well they recovered. Now, I would never take one test as definitive of what I'm going to do. Sometimes I want people to be a bit stressed out. Sometimes I want them to be low on endurance because that's what my focus is for that program. But if I see it day after day after day after day, well then I'm saying I'm not giving that person sufficient recovery. The volume may be too high for that person. Who here has ever trained teams? Raise your hand, yeah? The politics in training teams. You're restricted on spending time with them. You only have a certain limited access or unit to training. This sort of stuff can be complicated. So you wouldn't do this for all the players. You might just pick it for one or two of the players for a week and then move it on. I was, I don't know whether I was lucky enough, but I'm going to say I was lucky enough to work in Azerbaijan uh, preparing wrestlers for the Olympics last year. Uh, so we got nine medals in the Rio Olympics. Azerbaijan won the most amount of medals per country that sent athletes to it. So that was quite interesting. Although you look at me and think I speak Azerbaijani, I don't. So when I'm assessing an athlete, I need to see something. I need to see some sort of report so I can tell whether they're recovering or not. The translator was terrible. So he was no help whatsoever. So we use HRV to assess how they were adapting during their training camps. Do you see how well they were recovering? Because I couldn't sit down and converse with them. I couldn't get going with them, believe it or not. They're not that funny people, trust me. Especially wrestlers. Not a solid ear in the place. I mean, messed. So, what I want to get across is, think of them as, as frequencies. Think of them as radio stations. And if you're stimulating someone for strength and power, don't be surprised if that's down. But if you're training, what training method would wipe them all out? Does anyone know? Start to cross, ends in fit. Good job. Okay, the problem being that's too many questions to ask the body for the body to adapt to it. I'm not saying you can't do CrossFit. By all means, do. But what's the most common complaint with people doing CrossFit? They burn themselves out. They get injured because they're not listening to their body. They're stressing too many of the systems. They're trying to get fitter. They're trying to get stronger. They're trying to move faster. They're trying to improve agility when the body isn't adapting to it. And this is what I, I, sometimes I think you need to move with the times. You need to evolve with new technology and new systems. But the principles of training are the principles of training. You need recovery. You need the overload principle. But you can't overload everything. The body will just break down. So this guy here, I, I put a picture of him there. He's the fellow with the ponytail. He doesn't have it anymore. This is James Webb. He's uh, from Essex over to do his camps over here. So he, he trained with us during the week. Now, I put that picture of him up for a few reasons. He is focusing, you probably see this, he focuses too much on what his coach thinks and what other people think about his training. So I did this for him to show him where he was. And it's funny because he came up quite good for endurance. We were doing an interval training session, so he came up quite good on it. But he's the sort of person that if he had a scene at red, he would have had a crap session. He would let the machine dictate how he felt. So when you use machines like this, when you use analysis, although it might come up this person hasn't recovered, mentally they can be good to go. So don't let this dictate. This is a coach's tool. Don't let it overtake what you're going to do. And we've all seen those guys in the gym. Marius was in the gym and he jumped in on his training session. Can I say this? I'm saying it anyway. He jumped in as in he sort of went, ah, yeah, no thanks. So he was doing 10 sets of, of parallel pushes, uh, 1 to 10 walk to rest ratio. Average set was around 15 to uh, 20 seconds long. Marius did, did three, and I said to James, he just literally, no, don't say that on, he, em he, he emptied his tank. His tank was empty on the third one, and I seen it. So he went 16 seconds, 17 seconds, 17 seconds, 40 seconds. After three, after, that was four sets, he was gone, completely gone. So that was terrible, terrible. But by seeing an athlete move, seeing how their foot lands on the ground, see the concentration, the color of their face, real coaching in the weight room, in the gym, you'll know if your athlete is fatigued. You'll know that. However, sometimes when you have a group of people, a large number of people trying to one time, or language is an issue, you may not be able to see that. So for Marius, I could see that. For James, I can see that, but with a group, big group of people, that's when these things really help. So let's go through it here. So this was his, uh, this was 10 o'clock, uh, 10.24. 10, 
So he came up endurance. Good. However, somewhat compromised on speed, strength, and coordination. If someone comes up like that to you to come in to do a training session, what would you ask them? How would you, how would you sleep? Yep. Breakfast? Yes. What else? Hydration. Come on, guys. Mental focus. Okay. What training was he doing? He's an MMA fighter in camp for a fight on the, on the 16th of September. What did he do last night? Was he sparring last night? Was he, was he doing jiu-jitsu? How long was it? And the reason being is that his coach, the day before, broke his hand, punching his elbow. So now, the coach isn't taking the classes. He's taking the classes to help his coach out. So his coach has a broken hand. Actually, the second coach... Broke his leg, broke his femur. So again, they're full of broken bones. And what could that be? Overtraining, but that's a talk for another day. So when you have a profile like this come in, and any profile, identify what could be the reason why he hasn't recovered. So we did 10 sets of 1 to 10 walk to rest ratio of a 15 to 20 second challenge. I wanted him to be around 17 seconds. Um, what would I expect to see after the session? Will I get the same green, yellow, yellow, yellow? No. Flat line. This was 40 minutes later. Every one of his systems was fully depleted. Both his strength, his power, his coordination, and endurance was emptied. Why? When you do real, real high-intensity interval training, just doing interval training doesn't necessarily mean it's high-intensity. And that's when I, when I hear people go, oh, I did that program, I wasn't hard enough. No, you didn't do the program correctly. When you go fully on, you go fully on. And with athletes, particularly with these guys, we push them really hard. Anyone's ever done any of the sessions. So we can see there, in 40 minutes, he was completely emptied. Completely emptied. The very next day, I think it's 8 o'clock in the morning, yeah? Very next day, 8.39, I assessed him before training. This is before training. First one was before training. The red one was after. This was the very next day. What did we do that day? He comes into the gym. Like this, has he recovered? No. But do I tell him that? No. Jeez, why is it yellow on? It was, it was green the other day. Relax, James, relax. So what we did was we did rehabilitation exercises, prehab, some core work. Why? Because his coach has a cast up to here on his hand, and he's getting ready for a camp too, but we still need to train him. So you adopt it. You modify the program to suit the person's readiness. Could I have absolutely annihilated him again? Yes, I could. But where would that bring them? Further and further down. And then we're not going to get the same adaptation we're looking for. Now, we do sometimes want super compensation. When we're, here's the level of training, where they're gradually going down in the hope that they super compensate and come back up again. However, that's planned super compensation. We can't have super compensation on all the four systems because if we do, they're going to get injured and burnt out. So this is a super compensation curve. I'm sure you've all seen it before, where we have the initial alarm stage, and then the resistance stage, and as we come back up again, we're looking for the super compensation. The problem is, all the different systems have a different super compensation curve. So Marius did four sets, 40% what James did. James was able to recover somewhat from that program. But Marius, we nearly need to call an ambulance from him. He was pale. He could block his ears. Block, uh, he was in, in a bad way. Why? Because his systems were in condition to that. I remember doing a strongman session with Phil Richards at the back there. Oh, my God. I puked everywhere. There was one guy. Remember his knees? He crawled along the ground, ripped the knees off himself. It was horrible. It was horrible. I can just remember the back of him. Beautiful session, beautiful session. Not beautiful, Phil. What? The bear crawl. Were you there? Yeah, oh, that was horrible, wasn't it? Yeah. Thanks for that, Phil. So point being, when you do a real strongman session, you really know what it feels like. The problem is, with the programs you put together, and with periodization, and with personalized periodization, you need to be aware of what is stressing your client. An alarm stage for some people... Maybe 100 kilos for someone else, 150 kilos. Your body's ability to recover from lactic acid training may be good. I've got some girls, MMA girls, and they love lactate. They can go all day on lactate, but 
They're not as strong as they need to be. So strength is something you need to focus on. And you'll find athletes, some are better at strength, some are better at power, some are better at state. But in a sport, they all need to have certain components of it, but they all adapt at different rates.